Are you ready for funeral shaming? It's apparently a thing. It's a thing on Reddit. Before we dive in, I'm Nathan, you're you. It's season three, episode 186 of You'll Die Trying YDT. It's a show which pulls back the curtain, takes down walls, brick by brick, and exposes the true hearts of those caring for those. And yes, there is a thing called funeral shaming. There's wedding crashing. There's funeral crashing. It's a real thing where people actually will go and eat food. And I remember calling a man out one time. God rest his soul. He died, not because I called him out, but after calling him out like a year or two later, I saw his obituary in the paper and he wasn't at our funeral home. And his family is buried, well, his alleged family, because he was there for the family like seven times, seven different families in a row. It was pretty interesting, but he loved that meat tray. I'll tell you that. We're gonna dive into funeral shaming and I'm glad that you're here. Thanks for all the support for streaming last time. Break the internet, share it with a friend, share it with a foe, and I'm glad to meet you right here. Let's go. Share it with a friend, share it with a foe. <clears throat> Let's go. Uh, share it with a friend and share it with a foe. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go. Okay, funeral shaming. That's what we're talking about. But before we talk about that, are you following me on all the socials like YouTube? When you subscribe, it's because that's where I release exclusive content and also this video podcast, this podcast right there you can see in video format and get notified by pressing a bell you could also subscribe to bonus noise it's the curtains curtain like you pull back the curtain there's the curtain and then you pull back that curtain and then it's what's going on in a more personal sense in my life you get to hear about all the shit shows that ensue 5.99 a month actually it's 4.99 a month huh i digress you save a dollar because i messed up $4.99 a month, you get bonus noise. The podcast after the podcast about the podcast. I appreciate all the support. Everybody on TikTok and Instagram and all of that. But you came here for the funerals. You've stayed for the music. But we're going to the funeral shaming. And I had just kind of scrolled through this before recording this episode. <laughs> it's it's a lot of the things that we've talked about in videos and the series that I release on socials. It's like f photos at a funeral, question mark. We talked about death photos and how in the 1800s it was a thing, and especially in childbirth, women would, before they got married, I don't know if you recall this series, but they would actually pick out, they would make their wedding garments, they would make their baby's garments before they even had them, and then they would also use similar materials and fabric for their funeral garments. Why, you say? Because obviously childbirth was, it still is dangerous, but even more so then, and women God bless them, would know they could quite possibly die. Not only they, but their child. And so funeral photography was a thing. It was almost like a family portrait. And it sounds weird and and macabre, so to speak, but it was actually very beautiful. And for the longest time, it was taboo to take photos. And now it's almost like it's coming back. And this is one of the topics on Reddit. Like, Also, what to serve a visitation, food. We used to Bible Bell, especially very traditional Kentucky, Indiana. You go to the visitation, you have food, kind of like the funeral crasher, eating the meat tray. Since COVID, of course, after COVID rather, it's not as common. Popular visitations are the same day as the funeral, whereas before it was a two-day event. Before the two-day, it was even three days. So we're seeing this uh, sense of devaluing. I don't know if it's devaluing, but it's minimizing, right? It's it's condensing. That's the right word, condensing. And it's not necessarily a bad thing because who the hell wants to be at a funeral home for two days? Obviously, those that are very directly connected to the loved one. I, I get that. But you only have so many coming to pay their respects. And then after a while, wouldn't you think? I think it gets pretty, what's the word, burdensome or or just, I don't know what the right, right word is. <laughs> Getting told that you can't attend your own grandfather's funeral when you arrive. <laughs> Does anyone else think that getting asked to screw off at your grandfather's funeral after arriving is not normal, or is it just me? That's amazing. Just before Christmas, you saw that your grandmother... I can't even read this. This is... I, I know that during the pandemic, you could only pick 10 people, but I can't imagine people being like, you know what? You suck. I don't actually want you to come at at all. No. I mean, you must really be a terrible person to be asked to not to attend. 
I mean, I understand like you not being asked to be a pallbearer, not being asked to do something in in a participative, participatory, participative, participation way, whatever the word I'm trying to say. But you must really be terrible. Is it acceptable to not go to a funeral? This is what has sparked me to remind you, go to the visitation. It's very important because when the tables turn and you need that support, that community outreach, that that shoulder, it's nice to give it, especially if one day you will need it. And, and before we continue, in the next coming weeks, I'm very excited because over the next coming weeks, we will begin a series on the Comair Flight 5191 departing at around 6.07 where it crashed from Lexington, Kentucky. Lexington, Kentucky is only a few hours from my hometown of Owensboro, Kentucky. I recall the news. I remember, but not only will we tell the story of that, we will also tell firsthand stories because we will be speaking with Curtis and Curtis and myself will be discussing his firsthand accounts of the crash, the events that ensued, the family dynamics, the family notifications, the first responders, the last responders, and all the works of the coroner as he was working with and for the coroner's office that responded, Comair, Flight 5191, a mini series coming very soon. The movie that Netflix released about the plane crash on the way to Chile that had the rugby players, true story, where they had to actually eat those that died, their family, their friends. And it inspired me to take this deep dive into that rabbit hole and just the the mental fortitude, the physical, the will to continue to persevere when they felt that they were dead. And it was such a magnificent story of triumph and tragedy and every other adjective to describe good, bad, terrible, all of the above. And and thinking about that, I was thinking about tragic events that have happened that I've been a part of. And then talking with Curtis, his involvement with a tragedy that is much larger in scale than what I had from the standpoint of number of deaths. And we're going to dive into that in a special series. And I'm grateful for your support and your meeting me here. My managers, uh, I have a co-management team and, and they, one called and one texted, but there is on the radio, on AC radio, you have me at number 12, but two artists, Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift. I don't know if you've heard of them. They have two songs in the top 12, the top, top 10, excuse me. So that means that I'm a top 10 artist an independent artist from Owensboro, Kentucky that stood on the corner of the bus stop with my Tasmanian Devil shirt. And I said to Miss Nicholson, my bus driver, that I'm going to be famous one day. I'm going to be a, a big musician and star and entertain people and release music and entertain people by putting out things that I love. And here I am. It's amazing to think about 30 years passing and living what I said I would at seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I mean, like I am doing it and I want you to know that whatever you want to do in this life, if you want it bad enough, you will listen to no one to make it happen. No one. There's no, there's no rule book. There is no rule book. The rule book is made by people who have to make a book to make what they decided to do make sense and and make them feel better about themselves. Like, there's none. There's none. You pave your own streets. Like, go. Go and do what you want and enjoy it. I mean, we measure success and everything by what's in our wallet or what we drive or just whatever dumbass analogy that I can give that stereotypical, what does your heart feel? What does your, I don't know if it's articulated enough, but I have never been more content and excited in my entire life to know that what the kid in me said, like literally the kid 30 years ago. And then the kid in me now is like fulfilling. And I'm just so happy. 
and I want you to know that I'm grateful that you want to be a part of it. And I, I just can't articulate that enough. As we go live on, on YouTube every night, Monday through Thursday, that's not every night, by the way, that's Monday through Thursday, we talk about it, and I feel like I just beat a dead horse. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited, but I am. I'm really excited. So, so my call to action is I really would love for you to stream the music and share it. Share it with your friends. And also buy something at the merch store because we're giving away, while supplies last, the the, the record that started it all, A Gentleman's Closure. I will, I've been asked a bunch, yes, I'll autograph them. I will personally see to it that whatever you purchase, mug, shirt, hoodie, I will see to it that separate order, that CD for free, autographed to you while supplies last. Buy something in the merch store, you get an autographed record while supplies last. That's the easier way to say it. We were supposed to go into the funeral shaming, but... I started talking about the funeral uh, crasher. It's funny. And this kid who went to his granddad's funeral and was told to leave. That's funny. <laughs> I was shocked at how I was treated at my dad's funeral. My gosh, how sad. Is tipping a funeral arranger a thing? Hmm. My mother-in-law passed away last month. She was cremated and we were holding her celebration of life at the end of this month. I understand that grief affects everyone. But my father-in-law has been an absolute Karen <laughs> since the minute we stepped into the funeral home, insisting on dates that were already booked out, making outrageous requests at every turn, changing dates, changing chapel rooms, the funeral home has been multiple, and emailing our poor assigned funeral arranger <laughs> his every thought. We've tried to intercede as best as we can, but this poor person has had no peace would it be weird to tip them when this shit show wraps up? I just want them to know how much we've appreciated them throughout the process. I've been asked about this too before I read this response. I've been offered and I, I refuse it. I just won't take it. I can't. It's, it's what we do. It's what we do. We tend to the dead. We tend to those who love them. We tend to care for, love on. And no, your money is no good here. But this person says, I live in England, and I was a funeral arranger for two years. I wasn't allowed to accept tips. But sometimes people would shove money into my hand or my pocket when I politely declined it. So they weren't allowed to accept tips. I wouldn't say, I, I guess I would say that we wouldn't allow tips because it was just something that we didn't expect or accept. So I guess that would be the same thing. This person wrote, do it. <laughs> I love it. Yes, you know, it's it's good, and I challenge you, if you've had a good experience at a funeral home in your town, in your area, then go and review them positively, whether it be on Google, because Google reviews really matter, Yelp reviews really matter. Give them a five-star and then write about your experience, because I assure you they would greatly appreciate it. They're the unsung. They don't get as many pats on the back as you would think they do, and I think it's important to give credit where credit is due. Yes, I do. So funeral shaming, it's a new thing. It's a really new thing. And this episode is filled with telling you, go to Reddit and read about the funeral shaming. And also be sure to check in because we're going to be doing a deep dive into Comair Flight 5191, the plane that crashed in 2006 in Lexington, Kentucky, shortly after takeoff with Curtis, a firsthand account of who was there on scene and all the stories that ensued be sure to follow me on all the socials on tiktok at nathan morris music at nathan morris on instagram thank you to the however many thousands that joined me there and thanks for buying and supporting the merch and all it is that we do and i hope to see you at 180 whatever it is you're love far more than you can know this is your die trying see you at the next one